Welcome to the continuation of our virtual Prosa by Web Symposium 2020 and our web seminar series, which will run until the 15th of October. My name is Nora Tazir and I'm the Technical Program Manager of ProSurviveWeb. I will guide you through the upcoming web seminars. Today's web seminar covers model-based systems engineering for tool and mold making. We have two additional upcoming seminars on the 1st of October and on the 15th of, of October, and all our web seminars will be um, will be put online after the web seminars in, on our website and on our YouTube channel. So if you miss anything out, don't be afraid. But before starting with the theme today, let me give you a brief introduction to ProStep IVIP. ProStep IVIP is a registered association founded in 1993 and based in Darmstadt, Germany. We count round about 180 international companies and organizations as our members. We have committed ourselves to develop now joining. We have committed ourselves to developing modern standards for product data management and virtual product creation. The solutions we provide directly address the challenges that manufacturers and suppliers are facing in these fields. Before starting with today's topic, let me give you some organizational information. The presentation and the sound are available via Microsoft Teams. If you have problems with the sound, you can dial in by phone using the conference ID. To find your local dial-in number, just follow the link given in the Outlook invitation you received. One important action we ask you to take during this web seminar is to please mute your microphone. You can, of course, give us your feedback or address questions to the presenter. For this, simply use the chat section of this team session. The questions will be answered at the end of our web seminar. Today's session is scheduled to last for 45 to 60 minutes. And details on the program are given on our website. Now let's come to today's presenter. I welcome you heartily and thank you already for your presentation, Mr. Klaas Blume. Klaas is one of the two founders of Klaus. Together with Thomas Vorsatz, they bring MBSC to medium-sized companies in a very application-oriented way. Before founding Klaus, he was a researcher at the Fraunhofer IPK in Berlin in the field of virtual product development under the direction of Professor Rainer Stark. There, as head of the MBSE department, his main goal was to bring in research results into application. In today's presentation, he will give some insight in implementing MBSE components for toolmaking. This includes the linking of requirements with initial CAD models to make it possible to intelligently and automatically break design tasks down into partial models. And now let's get started. Class, please. Hello, and welcome to Model-Based Systems Engineering for Tool and Mold Making Industry. My name is Klaas Blume, and I'm very pleased to give you this e-seminar. First of all, I'd like to introduce you to Meissner. Meissner is a very well-known tool mold maker in the heart of Germany. And they have a tradition from almost 100 years. They're originally founded in the year 1922. Uh, they are internationally very successful. They have in Germany roughly about 250 engineers um, or the employees and they have departments all over the world. And their vision is to become the innovation leader in the tool mold making. On the other hand, we have Klaus. As already mentioned, Klaus is a Fraunhofer spin-off from the Fraunhofer Department of, Const uh, of Production Technology and Design Techniques and uh, the direction of Professor Rainer Stark. And they are the founders, Thomas and I. We both worked there for five years in the field of virtual product development. 
Furthermore, we are supported by APX. This is a joint venture from Axel Springer and Porsche. Our mission is to significantly accelerate cab design while reducing costs. And our vision is to become the B2B platform for engineering services worldwide. Now the briefly introduction to MBC and um, here I brought the definition from INCOSI, the International Council of Systems Engineering. MBC is the formalized application of modeling to support systems requirements, design, analysis, verification and validation activities beginning in the conceptual design phase and continuing throughout development and later life cycle phases. But I really want to rephrase this because uh, it's much understandable, more understandable in my own words from me. Uh, so you have two parts in MBC. One part is model based, the other part is systems engineering. The idea, idea behind systems engineering is divide and conquer. Divide complex systems in smaller, less complex systems and conquer them. Model based, the idea behind is to link all this models, this part models with these other, other, but furthermore to link them with the requirements you analyze this is so that you can do your verification validation very easy. And this altogether is model-based systems engineering. Furthermore, I brought you a process following uh, Dr. Buchholz. Um, you might know him. He just won the ProStep Iwe Scientific Award and uh, here from my side again, congratulations, it's very well deserved. And here you have a product development process. Starting here in your product idea and here in the end you have your product ready to manufacturing. Um, the next thing you will see here is a typical V model. This the idea behind is that you start on a product on a very high level and then you dive deep, 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 deep into your product since you're on the bottom where all the part models are and then integrate them again and check them if they're all so uh, well designed as imagined and in the end you have your finished product. So the next step is from your product level you dive into your system level and there you have several processes like requirement island analysis, functional system architecture definition, concept choice, or preliminary system model design logic and so on and so on. And these processes here is also maybe called RFLP process or approach. Uh, there are many remodels out there. Um, they are all good for special purpose. So if you want to use MVCE, you get your find uh, the process which is the best fit, which, which has the best fit for you. Next step now is the deep dive in your subsystem model and there are the uh, domains like mechanics, electrical, electronics or software and they're doing now in their domains, their models which are going to be integrated again and then you have there your um, verification and validation. And what you see here is a quite complex approach to reduce complexity. And you have in every phase, you have different tools, you have different exchange formats, you have different methods. So there's a lot of research behind to uh, yeah, reduce the complexity of MBCE to reduce complexity. Now you see here is a typical SME based in Germany and you see or I may notice there is a slightly difference between the very formalized process of MBSE and this SME which is producing goods and it's earning money by produce very good, pro good products or tools uh, on point and deliver very fast. And these SMEs are facing big problems today. One of the biggest problem is EU globalization. Uh, they have a big time and cost pressure. And this is not only because, but also that uh, quality in China is no longer worse than in Germany. And um, in the last years, 
they did a lot of optimization of their production lines and they had a lot of successes there. But nowadays, the bigger potential of optimization lies in the field of engineering. And they are facing more problems because we are here in the rural area. They are not very attracted to engineers. There is a lack of qualified engineers on the job market. So this is really, really hard for them. And then maybe MBSE could be a potential uh, solver for all those problems. But there are several other problems with MBSE. The formalisms. You have a very high effort in implementation and updating MBCE. There's a lot of change processes behind them it and you have to uh, change your IT infrastructure. You have to, to go in the minds of your employees. So it's a really, really high effort. And then um, I did a lot of presentations to these at my time at Fraunhofer to these companies. And then they always ask, hey, Mr. Blumer, yeah, I see the potential and it's great. Um, where is my return on invest? And this was very hard to answer because the benefits are often not directly quantifiable. So this is the hurdle you have to overtake if you want to bring MSE into practice. And this is where our approach starts. We bring, or then we have to develop, uh, we, we developed a tool that solved the specific problems of SMEs. These problems are quite different from the problems that the big OEMs have. And we are talking here in the, when we are talking from the automotive tool chain, uh, from the chain value chain, we are in the tier three supplier, maybe a tier four supplier. So the end of this value chain and they, we want to solve their problems. Furthermore, it has to be very easy to install and to use. So that there are no big change processes behind is that there are no um, change uh, and IT infrastructure. And furthermore, that the user uh, will gonna love to use it. And the direct benefits for also using companies. So the users have to, to have an, in, an internal motivation to use it. And for the companies, it's very easy to say, hey, okay, if I'm going to use this now, I have a return on invest on blah, 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 the next days, the next weeks, or next month. And this is where Klaus steps in. And our process, I want to here remind the V model again. And um, we thought, yeah, okay, we have the solution in mind. What's the purpose of the solution? Where are we going to locate the solution? In the last year, there was a lot of research done in the beginning, requirement analysis, uh, link requirements with system models. Then in the field of system modeling, the logic approach there. And yeah, as already mentioned, uh, the research from Dr. Buchholz, uh, which brought the um, community one step further in the field of uh, virtual hybrid prototyping. And now if you're thinking of like the SME uh, on the picture earlier, um, what they are doing is here. They are doing the mechanics model. They are not making um, big system modeling. They are not uh, there yet and they don't have to be. They are doing good. They're producing goods. This is what they're earning money with it. And their daily business is down there in the deep in the V model. And uh, therefore we have to find a solution there and there's nothing happens yet. And what we bring into action is uh, MVCE for the for mechanics. And therefore we divide and conquer down there one step further and link all these new part models with each other and with the requirements to make it easily, easily usable for all these companies. And the process is very, very easy. Now you see here 
as a company and typical use case is uh, the shop floor is waiting there's an extra shift on weekday on, on the weekend and it's wednesday and uh, you as an engineer have to uh, do your cat design that the employees on in the weekend can produce the goods and you see and it's, it's two less time to get finished and now with the Klaus engine it is possible to split off these tasks in many smaller ones and you can imagine Klaus engine as a toolbox a toolbox containing several tools which are our algorithms and these algorithms can now automatically split off one complex CAD design and many smaller independently solvable tasks and the video man a is talking that 85% uh, of every CAD design is not from scratch it's a remodeling of existing CAD designs so if the toolmaker is producing a new tool for the same customer it's taking an earlier version or an earlier product and adapt it to the new requirements and this we're going to split off in independently solvable tasks next thing is that you not have one task you have now many tasks 10 20 30 tasks maybe you need a project one management MBSE there's also a big part of project management and this is here the same so we have this solve with the Kanban board I will show it to you later uh, there the task can be uh, taken and published once all these tasks are published on the Kanban board this can be now solved by the engineers and these engineers can be internal or external what we want to bring is that these Klaus engineers can be anywhere on the planet and you have I, I really think that you have this um, software engineer in, in your mind uh, early in the morning he goes uh, in the internet and grabs some new projects working really great and in the afternoon um, he uh, shut down his PC and he's on Bali and just uh, dive into the ocean in the field of mechanical engineering so I never heard that a mechanical engineer is doing uh, his CAD design on the beach of in Bali but wouldn't it be great and this is what we want to enable we want to bring the same opportunities for mechanical engineers uh, as for the software engineers and the next big thing we are solving here is, is uh, that many SMEs are not outsourcing the CAD design because uh, they want to protect their IP or furthermore they are often not allowed to outsource it because of compliance reasons and now with the splitting off in many many smaller parts uh, the IP never leaves the company only small puzzle parts and one engineer sees uh, at none of the time the overall picture so they have not to be frightened to outsource their CAD designs and I have worked um, three years or four years in the smart SE working group and we had there many topics around this uh, like how to, um, to, to exchange uh, simulation data between or the simulation models between companies and how to protect them and now here we have the best IP protection uh, possible because not at none of the time your IP leaves the company and therefore we want to enable this but in this use case uh, it's all be done internal and once all the part uh, solutions are made the Klaus engine now re-merged these to a whole solution together so I'll now show you how it looked like in practice what you see here is um, a mold it, um, for a blow, blow mold uh, for Meissner it's a typical tool you have to imagine this tool is uh, maybe as big as a car and the product which is going to be produced here for the car manufacturer is the tank but the product what Meissner is producing is the whole tool you have two half um, and 
you have to imagine that there is going to be uh, inside a tube which is going to be blown off then the two get together and here in these steel inserts the uh, material which is too much are uh, gonna cut off then it's gonna be cooled down and the tool is getting um, um, yeah, uh, away from each other and therefore you have a perfect tank for your car and we want to address now here these steel inserts nowadays one engineer is doing all this cat design for the steel inserts and if you want to bring it to a shop floor, you have to cut it in smaller pieces because the milling machine is not big enough to mill the whole thing. And this is, takes a very, very long time. And now, how would it look like with Klaus? Or how it looks like today with Klaus? Here you see again the two parts of the model. Um, we reduced uh, the model details because uh, there are some IP rights on it and uh, we'd like to show you all details of our approach. So therefore we reduced the model. What you see here is now the blow mold. And the next thing is um, you see the tank. And the tank is going to be uh, um, constructed here at the space. This is uh, the steel insets which are going to be made. And how is now the process looks like? The engineer will split off these uh, model into smaller models. And these smaller models will be uploaded to the engineers. The engineer is now solving all these things in parallel, uploaded again, and then the steel, the ready to manufacture steel and that's can be synthesized to a whole solution again. And you might have noticed here the MBSE. You have here your requirement as a CAD model. This is your inset. And then you divide it in smaller parts and you conquer them. This is systems engineering, divide and conquer. And now more model based. You link the requirement with your product direct link there and furthermore you link all the part models with each other so that you can easily rematch them to perfect solution and yes it's a very very easy uh, use case it's only cat design but what you're doing here is mbse and you are not knowing it uh, but, but you can use the potential the next thing now, so I want to show it how it's going to be made in practice. Here you have uh, the cat design, and you have the tank, and here you see the sketch uh, which is going to uh, split off the tool again. You now you open the Klaus engine, and the Klaus engine is a tool, it's easy to install, you don't need any uh, further rights or change on your IT infrastructure, and the tool is going to connect with the CAD system. So you don't have to do any interfaces, you don't have to change anything in your company. The two just connect with the CAT here. And then you can do anything else in the Klaus engine. First you create an order where you put all the tasks later in and then you start one of our algorithms um, to, to split off the one thing and many smaller things we have many of these. This is now partitioned by sketch and after one minute you have now eight different and independently solvable tasks. Of course you have now the tasks but you have to enrich the tasks with further information for the engineer that you can easily solve the problem alone. Um, um, you can add some less and have more requirements or a picture of one already made um, steel insert though that you have an example and see here are also some PDM functionalities that um, often are not there in the uh, companies in the SMEs and once you have done all your eight tasks you approve them and then you approve them to get solved by the community. And here's now your project management approach. You have the Kanban board and you see they're all improved for internal 
use, you have, can output also um, give and proof for external use, but in this case, it was all done internally. Then the engineers will also start their class engine and see, hey, ah, okay, there's a new task for me. I, um, I'm just taking to me and I have one single source uh, where all the data and information is that I need to uh, do my task. Um, and so I can just start in my design and yeah, I can here read something uh, for it that I do the best thing. And here's the next engineer, maybe she's called Samantha. Now she's also doing uh, great work that are just taking a model and the third engineer. And you can see how easily now all the engineers can work in parallel and all the complexity behind it is automatically solved and not visible for the engineer. Once they are all finished, um, they can be upload, uh, uploaded again. And there's also a review process, of course, for the uh, project management, because you have now to use the project manager. This is the guy or the woman uh, who are created uh, the task and the engineers are doing the task. And you have here uh, several Kanban of you and you will see that they are all done part by part in parallel and here you did see a, a review process here it's uh, done and once they're approved from the project manager that they're really, really done they're gonna be to abgeschlossen so they're closed and once all eight steel insets are done they can be downloaded again and the engine will synthesize us again to a solution. This we're gonna look now at and it's very easy, just can be downloaded and inserted and, as, and you will see now that they are perfectly fit together. And the task is finished. So this was the use case and uh, conclusion we could save or we could speed up the, the cat design uh, eight times faster because of parallelization. There are no setup costs and the software can be easily it's installed. Um, there's no change management process. You don't have to make a big introduction. The uh, engineer can just start, download and start and it's uh, outsourcing IP protected CAD design is now possible in the easiest and safest way nowadays viable. The next thing is now an outlook and uh, some of you will uh, now this, this is CAM. After CAD comes CAM, computer added manufacturing. So why not only bring the CAD design to the shop floor or the CAD, CAD, uh, computer added manufacturing department, but also bring there the MSE process interaction. And nowadays, a typical CAM process looks like this. You have the model preparation for the CAM department then you have a hand over to the CAD department, then you have a machine and tool selection and the preparation of the CAD data for the CAM tool and path generation, tool path, strategies, path creation and virtual validation. And in the end, you hand it over to the manufacturing, which are now going to go to the machine. And we identified two processes where our approach of MSE can be very, very big potential and it's very easy to use. Once in the CAM preparations, so preparation the CAD data for the CAM uh, by features or regions, and then doing the CAM operations. Uh, with Klaus, now it's looked like this. You have the partitioning of the CAD model, the casts are created in the Klaus engine, then it's gonna be deployed to the engineers 
they are creating all the cam operations they're all gonna be fed back then with the synthesizers you have there then the virtual uh, validation and verification and you're ready to manufacture first of all now you have the whole mode and this you're gonna now split up and uh, for different features like contour milling pocket milling or drilling so here you have your manufacturing processes the next step is you cut this after processes divided mold uh, into smaller uh, smaller packaged smaller parts so that one engineer can easily solve it and now you have 12 tasks instead of one big task and therefore you can be 12 times faster of course so we did this already in this use case with this mod and you see here the cam programmers can now in parallel um, make the cam programming you see this here in tebis and you here have the contour milling you have here the pocket milling and uh, here you see the drill milling and you see that they can easily independently work from each other and make a part virtual verification and validation and once they are all done with their uh, modeling The Klaus engine will put this all together to a whole solution and this is what we will see here is that the parts will all put together and in the end you can of course do a whole virtual verification and validation and bring so your product much faster to the machine. Thank you very much for your listening. I'm here now uh, several minutes for further questions. And if you have in mind any further use cases, we are really seeking, seeking or searching new use, use cases. And in, in the heart, we are still um, both researcher. So um, yeah, reach out to us and uh, we are really happy to discuss further ideas with you. Thank you. Thank you, Klaas, for, for this really interesting presentation. Um, so if anyone has any questions, please just submit them in the chat section of this, um, of your team session. You find the little chat box up here, just tap it and then you can write down your questions. Um, but maybe um, I know that Klaas, you spent a lot of time also in Prosa um working group. So did you did you use your experience for your development of the tool or your approach? yes yes this was a great starting point um because in the working groups there were many uh, yeah companies uh, which addressed their pain and discussed their um, solutions and especially in the smartest e-working group there was one topic the exchange of simulation models uh, between companies that are working together and this is also one part of, of our approach is to exchange models in um, our case there are cat models and therefore um, yeah there was a great great experience i made there and get a lot of knowledge to 
bring this now into practice. Also, there was a big topic, but there didn't was in the working patches is IP. Uh, this is a big pain for the, uh, for the companies, and there's also one approach from us to solve this. Okay, great. Um, I see there has yeah. there are some some questions. Let's just um, take them one by one. So number one, um, how do you decide on where to separate geometry? What kind of SE methodology did you use to come up with the function structure, functional structure? So um, there are separate ways uh, to um, separate the geometry. Um, we have uh, now eight algorithms uh, which can help you to uh, divide it in many smaller parts. Uh, the engineer is now becoming more or less to a project engineer. He knows best how to split off the part in smaller parts and then he has the tools for it. So by sketch, uh, some are sketch based that you just go uh, through it um, like we saw in here in the use case or you just draw some holes and cut there something else or you get um, some features uh, or to cut me out or drilling, drilling features or furthermore you have some algorithms that make some um, optimization so make me seven parts they are most uh, they are all common length and so on and so on um, yeah there's no we link them behind uh, without any typical SE methodology, so there are uh, still. But then the next, what was the? Uh, what was so the, the next question. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. What was the role of Meissner after they started using MBSE? So they're still challenging us. Um, they brought the new use case for CAM. Um, so um, the area, they, sorry, the the return on the, the uh, ROI. Sorry, I didn't. Um, yeah, the return on yeah, investment. They, yeah, the return on rest uh, for Meissner is now that they can um, be um, un, uh, not not only faster, but they can have the best better uh, decision for if they are a new uh, order for a new tool. Uh, now they can easily look like, hey, we are using the software, and I know what's what's the process and I know how many tasks are still open. So I have a better decision there and this is uh, what their the RE there is there. So faster and better decision making. OK, thank you. Um, the next one is, can you check the effect of changes in the CAD design on whether or not the requirements are fulfilled? Uh, we, we do have automa automatical checks. Uh, so some checks if um, did something happened at all or um, is, is there something completely wrong, but there you um, go maybe into a dead end. You can automatically check everything, but there's so much effort in implementation of these checking algorithms that it's not very economically usable. So therefore we have some basic checks and in the end the project engineer who uh, divided all this parts in smaller parts now do have to make a revision of every smaller part if it's okay or if it's not okay. Okay, um, then another question. How do you verify and validate the system at the end? In the end, the project engineer now has all the small parts all together and therefore he can then use uh, in every common CAD tool or uh, if everything is, is uh, good so far, uh, fits everything together and then he has or she has an eye on it and can check it. Um, and in our first steps, we propose that the um, tool is not too complex. Um, that the, the connections are not too big, that the links between the two uh, the parts are not too big, so they're, they're really dependable solvable. But in our vision, um, there are the more, more, more complex um, products are, or could also be made. Yes, thank you. The next question is, is the breakdown of large components to smaller pieces automatic? Yes. Um, yeah, it's can, it can be chosen. You have many, uh, several algorithms uh, where you can choose from. Uh, so you have always, uh, you, you always have the power and you can easily 
of course, make a freestyle uh, task. Um, and there's also the connection between our tool and the CAD software. So you can grab from the CAD software data into a new task. And it's uh, um, yeah, fully up to you. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm sorry, I just was on mute. I kind of <laughs> missed that out. <laughs> um, thank you, class. Um, at the moment, I can't see any other questions. So thank you for this really interesting web seminar. Um, and to all listeners, thank you for listening. If you missed our symposium, so just, ah, there, there are another Ah, there yeah. the questions are popping yeah, up. Yeah, okay. So there are uh, but, uh, at the moment we support uh, Katia V5, um, but we will provide uh, whatever we will support any CAD software commonly used, like SolidWorks, uh, Unigraphics, uh, and so on. Um, well, uh, for many use cases, the environment of the CAD model is quite important. Structures around the machine, the building. Uh, where the machine stands. Is the Klaus engine able to exchange environment geometry? Everything what is inside the CAD model. Well, so if you open the CAD model, um, everything there you can divide with our software. So we have also big production lines, um, whole production line for an automotive industry. And there's uh, also the problem that not many engineers can work in parallel on this big model. And there you can easily cut off in several pieces the whole uh, production line and therefore then the uh, engineers can work with the environment they needed. Okay, great. Thank you. So I guess let's wait another second, but I think it's good for today. Um, if you do have any other questions, just um, feel free to send them to me and I will be happy to forward them to you, class, um, and then they can also be answered at like offline. Um, if you have missed any of our symposiums, um, um, sorry, symposiums presentations or um, also our web seminar series, you can find them on our YouTube channel. We have all rec we have recorded everything for you to review on um, our YouTube channel called ProStep IWeb Association. So just check this out there. And um, I would also like to thank all our sponsors for making this possible. And again, thank you, class, for this interesting web seminar. And I'm looking forward to Seeing, hearing, well, not, yes, hearing. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> hearing also from my you. side, or, um, or from our side, uh, very thank you for the opportunity to show this use case with the industry. And we are really looking forward to everything what's come next. So thank you for listening and goodbye, everybody.